In the previous set of videos, we talked about how to map the locations of your transit stops and lines, and how to assess the coverage of your transit system. However, so far we've only talked about getting to and from the transit stops. We have not talked at all about the transit schedules. The schedules are important. After all, convenient access to a transit stop isn't useful if there's no service during the time of day you need to use it. Ultimately, we'd like to measure how well people are served by public transit, and the frequency of available service is one component. You might be interested to know the frequency of service available at different job centers, or maybe you want to correlate the frequency of service with property values, or look for disparities across neighborhoods or racial or socioeconomic groups. In this section, I'm going to talk about how to map the frequency of public transit service during a time window using the Calculate Transit Service Frequency tool, and I'll show you some examples of mapping the frequency of service at stops, along lines, at points of interest, and in your transit system service area. Suppose there's a bus stop right outside Jerry's house. It's very easy and convenient for Jerry to walk out his front door to the bus stop and wait for a bus. Suppose there's a bus stop right outside Tom's house, too. But whereas a bus visits Jerry's stop every 10 minutes, Tom's stop only gets a bus once every hour. Although it's equally easy for Jerry and Tom to get on a bus, Jerry is almost certainly better served by the transit system because he has a lot more opportunities to actually get on the bus and travel away. He's less likely to be late for work if he misses his bus, and he doesn't have to plan his errands quite so carefully. Is Tom's neighborhood underserved by the public transit system? Are there disparities in how well Jerry's and Tom's respective demographic or socioeconomic groups are served? Is Jerry's house worth more than Tom's because of its better transit service? Is Tom more likely to drive his car to work than Jerry? You can combine your transit frequency analysis with other data to answer questions like these. The Calculate Transit Service Frequency tool can be found in the Public Transit Tools toolbox in the Analysis Toolset. This tool can calculate the frequency of transit service at stops, along lines, at points of interest, or in areas. You can choose one or more time windows during which to calculate the frequency of service. The tool output includes several statistics related to the frequency of service, including the number of runs per hour and various measurements of headway. This tool uses as input a feature dataset containing a specific set of feature classes representing the ESRI Network Analyst Public Transit Data Model. I'm going to give you a full introduction to this data model in the next video. For now, I'll just kind of skip over it. The quick summary is that most people create this data from GTFS data using the GTFS to Public Transit Data Model tool. Before I give you a demo of the tool itself, I want to talk about time windows for a moment because this is pretty important for understanding how the tool works. You can configure one or more time windows during which to calculate the transit frequency statistics. This is the time of day and date or day of week during which the transit service is being considered. For example, you could compare morning rush hour on a typical Wednesday with morning rush hour on a holiday, or weekend daytime service or late night. The time windows consist of several components. First, you need to decide if you want to use a specific date or a generic weekday. So, do you want to model a typical Wednesday, or do you want to model a specific Wednesday representing a holiday or a special event? To some extent, this choice may depend on your transit data and how dates are modeled there, because the data itself doesn't always support both generic weekdays and specific dates. For more details on this, refer to the next video that contains detailed information about the public transit data model, particularly the section about the calendars and calendar exceptions tables. The next thing you need to specify for your time window is the start date and time. The date portion will be interpreted either as a specific date or just the weekday, depending on the choice you made for the previous parameter. The time portion will be the time of day when the time window starts. Next, specify the duration. The duration is the number of minutes the time window should last. Next, choose to count arrivals or departures. Do you want to count the number of times a bus arrives or the number of times the bus departs? Finally, you need to give the time window a unique field prefix. The tool's output will include a bunch of fields representing the various transit frequency statistics, and the field names will be prefixed by this string. For example, let's say you have a time window for morning rush hour and another time window for evening rush hour, and you use AM rush and PM rush as the field prefixes. The output will include fields AM rush underscore num runs per hour and PM rush underscore num runs per hour. Something useful to know is that the time window settings are written to the metadata of the output feature class. So if you can't remember what your field prefix represents in the future, you can check the metadata for the full settings you used when you ran the tool. 
Now I'll show you a demo of running the Calculate Transit Service Frequency tool, and we'll take a look at the various outputs the tool can produce. Here I am in ArcGIS Pro, and I'm going to calculate the frequency of transit service for our Cincinnati tutorial data using the Calculate Transit Service Frequency tool. So this tool is in the Public Transit Tools toolbox. First, I'll map the frequency of service at transit stops. So I'll choose the transit stops analysis type. The input that I need to choose is a transit feature data set with public transit data model data. I'll just pick the feature data set from the Cincinnati Transit Network tutorial data that already has everything in the right format. And I'll give the output a name. And now I need to set the time window. So I'm going to use a generic weekday. And today is Wednesday. And I can just use today's date to represent a generic Wednesday. And let's start at 7 in the morning. And we'll do a duration of 120 minutes. So a two hour time window representing morning rush hour. And we'll, we'll count departures. I could also count arrivals if I wanted to, but departures will be fine. And we'll call our output field prefix AM rush. Now, if I wanted to, I could add another time window and the tool would just calculate all the statistics for multiple time windows. But for now, we'll just do morning rush and that'll be fine. This property, separate counts by transit line, allows me to choose whether the counts will be separated so that if there are multiple transit lines using the same transit stop, they'll get a separate copy of that stop for each transit line. I'm just going to leave them combined. So if multiple transit lines are using the same stop, it'll all be counted together in one statistic. And I'll run the tool. All right, the tool is finished. And you can see here I have a copy of my Cincinnati transit stops and it's been symbolized according to the number of transit runs per hour are available within the time window that I chose. So you can see that the dark colored ones have a higher frequency of service, and these seem to be in the downtown area and along some of the main corridors, as we might expect. Um, the lighter color ones have less service for, per hour, so zero to one trips per hour. Uh, and then these small ones with the border, those represent stops at which there is no service at all during the time window. Now if I open the attribute table, there's actually quite a few statistics that are calculated here. So the num runs per hour is just the number of times a bus or a train visits that stop per hour during the time window, but there's also some other statistics that you could look at and symbolize as well. So there's the total number of runs, there's the minimum headway, maximum headway, and average headway during that time window as well. There's also the number of lines, so the number of transit lines that serve that stop during the time window. And you'll notice for these headway fields, sometimes the headway can't be calculated. So for example, this one, there were zero runs during the entire time window, and so there's no way to calculate the headway when there's no runs at all. So that's why you might sometimes see nulls in these fields. The tool also has the ability to calculate the frequency of transit service along transit lines at points of interest and in areas. Let's run it again for areas. These areas will represent the service area or coverage of your transit system, but instead of simply showing plain polygons, it will create polygons that represent the frequency of service available in those transit service areas. Now you'll notice that the tool dialog has populated with a bunch of extra parameters when I chose this analysis type. And that's because in order to do either areas or points of interest, I need to specify a network data source to use for doing some network analysis calculations under the hood. So for example, for the areas mode, 
it's going to calculate a service area around all of the public transit stops, and then it will do some post-processing and calculations, but it needs a network data source to use for that service area. I'm just going to use my StreetMap Premium network data set, and then I have to pick a travel mode to go along with it. And I want to make sure to pick a travel mode that represents people walking to or from transit. So I don't want to use some network data set and a travel mode that represents people riding on transit, because right now what I'm doing is modeling passengers walking to or from the transit system. So I'll pick walking distance. And I'll use a quarter mile walking distance buffer to model. The cell size parameter is something that the tool uses internally. It does a rasterization and sampling approach, and so the output is actually going to be a combination of little cells of this size. And this is just to make the problem a little bit more tractable and so that you don't end up with a polygon layer with a bunch of small slivers that are kind of physically meaningless. A cell size of about 80 meters should be good because this is roughly equal to the size of a city parcel or maybe a little bit bigger. And so it's something that's meaningful on a pedestrian scale and it's not so large that you're losing detail, but it's not so small that it's sort of meaningless. And now I'll run the tool. And this polygons mode can take some time to run, especially for larger data sets. I finished running the tool for the area mode, and I also ran the tool for all of the other modes so I can show you the outputs from each. So here's our AM rush hour showing our map of the area within a quarter mile of all of the public transit stops in Cincinnati, color coded by the number of transit trips per hour that are accessible to those areas. So as you might expect, the downtown core has the highest frequency of service, and the areas out in the suburbs either have no service at all or they have less service unless it's along these popular corridors. Now this is for morning rush on a weekday. I also calculated one for late night service, so 9 p.m. to midnight, which you can see here. So it, it's definitely a little bit different. There's a lot more areas with no service and a lot of areas with less frequent service. Let's take a look at the lines output. So here we have the public transit lines color coded by the number of runs per hour. And the Cincinnati data is a little bit funny because a lot of the lines are these big straight lines that represent some express services. I'll talk more about that in a future video explaining why that's the case. But if you really wanted to zoom in on some of these smaller corridors in between stops, you could, you could get some information. All right, let's look at points of interest. I was able to download some open data from Hamilton County's GIS portal. Hamilton County is the county where Cincinnati is, and it's roughly this area here. And so I found in that open data a layer showing the locations of polling places, so places where people go to vote. And I could use the Calculate Transit Service Frequency tool to calculate the frequency of public transit service available at those polling places. So you can see some of those that are out in the more rural areas have no transit service, and actually some of the, a lot of them have pretty good transit service in the main center of Cincinnati. So that's pretty cool. Now the points of interest mode not only allows you to input points like these polling locations, but you can also input polygons, which I know it's called points of interest, but you could also consider it polygons of interest. So if you wanted to calculate the frequency of transit service available at, for example, parcels, you could do that. So also in my Hamilton County data, I grabbed the data set of all of the parcels in the county, and I put that into the tool. And the tool behind the scenes will just take the centroid of each parcel and calculate the available transit service at the parcel. And then it will calculate all the same statistics that it would normally do for points of interest. So as you can see, this, this is quite a lot of data. It's drawing kind of slowly just because there's so many parcels. 
but it's taken each parcel and it's, a, it's calculated the frequency of service available at that parcel. And the tool performance is actually pretty good for this mode. I put in this entire parcel data set, just dumped it in as is, and it, the tool completed in about half an hour, which is not bad for a very large amount of data and a large OD cost matrix that it's doing under the hood. Okay, it looks like it finally finished drawing. So this is all the parcels in Cincinnati, and it looks fairly similar to the service areas layer that I created earlier, just because, as you might expect, the parcels that are within a close walking distance of the transit lines have some frequency of transit service available, and all of this other area that's in the stripes, that's just areas where there's no transit service available. But if I zoom in a little closer, you'll see it actually does look kind of different, because each one of these parcels has some frequency of transit service accessible to it. So here's my parcel data that came from the county. And at the end, I've got my calculate transit service frequency statistics attached to it in the fields. One other thing, as I mentioned in the slides, I can look at the metadata for any of the outputs of this tool. And you'll see an area that has calculate transit service frequency, and then it has the time window information for when I ran the tool. So the time window field prefix was AM rush, and what AM rush actually means is that I used this date and 120 minutes counting departures.